is a it is an act of worship to, to uh, work, you know to give whether it be financially or time or talents you know I think that is I think that is great and so you know as long as we give them with the right heart right Psalm one sixteen twelve says. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? You know, you know, when I'm sometimes when I'm when I'm in when I'm praying, I I think, wow, I, I can't I can't even think of a, a better word than thank you. You know, my mind just, you know, thank you. What what's what more can you say? Well, you you can say it with your life, right? You can say thank you with your life. Um but in the Old Testament, we're, we're encouraged to honor God by, by bringing the first fruits of our labors to him as an act of worship. We learn this in Proverbs uh, 3. Um, and in the New Testament, we find Jesus honoring a person who, who worshiped God by bringing her generous gift to the temple. He did not honor the quality of her gift, or the quantity of her gift, but the quality of her gift and the spirit in which it was given. Jesus sat across from the place where people were offering their gifts. Now, can you imagine that? You, you walk in to, to give your gift, and, and Jesus is sitting there. You're like, oh, hi. How you doing? Well, he is here in spirit, isn't he? <laughs> but he was sitting across watching them as they, as they give their gifts. And, and, and um, the only person honored on this particular occasion uh, was a poor widow who, who demonstrated a good spirit in her giving. And Jesus, he, he continues to honor those who give um, and the basis of his honor. You'll probably hear me say this a couple of times. It's not the size of the gift, but the spirit in which the gift is given. It, the heart has to be right. Jesus wants to honor our giving, and how can he do so? So, so that's kind of what this is about, you know, and, and it's, it's about worshiping God with our gifts. And um, so if you have your Bible today, uh, we're going to turn into Mark's gospel, and we're going to read uh, from chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. I'll be reading from the NIV today. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Now Mark 12, uh, 21 through, or 41 through 44, it's a Bible passage about, it's a story of a, of a poor widow uh, who gave uh, two small copper coins to, to the temple treasury while many rich people just threw in large sums of money. Jesus used this event to teach his disciples about uh, giving and humility. He, he said that the, the widow had put more in than all the rich people because she gave all she had, while the rich people gave out of their abundance. As I was reading these verses, uh, I began to think about people in our society and the total love affair that people have with money. People are married to their bank accounts, and that's the most important thing in their life is the bottom line that they see in their bank account all the time. That's all they think about is their bank account. So all they think about is how much money they have in their account. That is a love affair with money. In the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, 24, he, they came to mind when Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And so, Jesus honors an interest in, in the treasury. He, he, he honors an interest in the treasury. An interest in the treasury represents an interest 
in the Lord himself. The widow did not go to the temple just to, just to pay a bill, but to honor her God. All through biblical history, people have expressed an interest in the Lord through their giving. Even Cain and Abel uh, made offerings to God. And in the tabernacle, the temple, and the synagogues, God was worshipped by means of the treasury. Interest in the treasury represents a concern for the Lord's work. The widow evidently periodically uh, went to the temple, uh, and she gave. And when she gave, she knew that it was, it was for the Lord's personnel, for the, for the temple upkeep, and for the provision of sacrifices. That's what all the, all the money goes to in, in that kind of, kind of situation. One prominent reason for interest in the treasury is the advancement and continuation of the Lord's work. Amen? Amen. Yes, it takes money. It takes money for it to happen, doesn't it? Yeah, things, things cost. When we want to do things, yeah, it costs money. Churches are involved in the Lord's work, and people give to advance it. The Lord honors an interest in the treasury. and We should periodically ask ourselves, how interested am I in the treasury? Just take a look at your checkbook. It should give you an indication. Jesus honors a, a prop of, proper motive uh, toward the treasury. Proper motive. Jesus exam, examines the motives of those who give. Uh, the, Lord, the Lord had a, had a good place for observing the givers. He just sat right across from it and watched them as they threw their money in. Yeah. He, knows, he knows what's in here, doesn't he? <laughs> He, he, can, he can see your face, but he knows what's in here. And he, saw those who, who, he saw those who wanted to be seen uh, giving. You know, he wanted, wanted you know, there's, there's people that just, they feel like they need to be seen dropping their stuff into the plate. These people probably hit the trumpets. You know what I mean by the trumpets? It's these, it's these things that kind of resemble a trumpet. I took a few pictures, though. I went to Egypt and took some pictures. Um, but you see those st little things sticking out of the wall there? Trumpets. They, they kind of look like trumpets. And then, you know, if you throw a huge thing of coins in there, it's going to make a big rattle. You know, that, that way somebody will know how much you put in there. There's that again, another example. I took about four examples. I don't know about that one on the right, but... <laughs> so they would drop so they would drop their large large contributions in these things and you know if you heard a big you heard a big commotion going on everybody around you knew that you gave a big contribution Jesus saw those who gave but but more than merely observing who gave he saw he saw why they gave a poor widow made uh, an acceptable gift the acceptance of the gift was not on the basis of its size, but of its spirit. She gave because she wanted to honor the Lord, not to be seen or heard by others. And Jesus continues to examine motives for giving. He sees those who, who give out of guilt, self-righteousness, or ostination, showiness, and he, he isn't pleased. The proper motive is to, to give out of love, for the Lord Jesus Christ. I can, I can be honest with you right now. When I first became a Christian, all I could say was, the church just wants your money. You know, all they want is your money. I didn't have a spirit of giving. I, I, and I'm not here to bash any other church, but, you know, I grew up in the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church now, they will sit you down and when you become a member, and they will pull, they will pull out your W-2s, and they want to see what you're going to give, and they're going to tell you what you're going to give. And so um, when I saw them doing that to my parents, that just, that just turned me off. It turned me away because you're not giving with a spirit of giving. You know, you're giving out of, out of obligation. You have, you have to do it, you know. And so 
uh, that, that was one of the things that, that turned me off. And then as I, as I, when I became a Christian, I had a, I had a good mentor. She's sitting right over there. And, you know, we, I, I could see how she would always, she would always give out of hers. You know, and I said, I said, well, you give out of yours, I ain't giving out of mine, you know. And then it wasn't too long after that, you know, God, God instilled that within me. But, but uh, to, see, to see a person giving out of their poverty and giving with a spirit of giving, it, it, makes, a, it makes a whole difference. So, you know, uh, but giving with the proper motive, it satisfies the giver. People who, people who give for any other reason than selflessness can never be satisfied. Those who think they can, can buy God never feel they have paid their bills. Those who parade their, their giving, they must work harder to have a bigger show next time, you know? Jesus honors unselfish giving. The, the rich, as well as the poor, can give honorably. And remember, it's, it's not the size of the gift, but the spirit of the gift. Jesus honors a sacrifice for the treasury. Sacrificial giving originates with a great desire to give. Again, here I was back in my younger days. No, didn't have it. Didn't have that that, uh, giving heart. I didn't have a desire to give because I felt like it was give and take. You know, me give, you take. No one prompted the woman to put in an offering. Uh, the thought of the thought of giving, it, it was, it, it it began in her heart. The thought of giving began in her heart. She had a she had a giving spirit before she ever even gave the gift. And if you study sacrifice, you'll see that that one who sacrifices has a general, genuine desire to help others. Look at the Lord. He sacrificed his glory in heaven. Why? He had a deep desire to help others. The widow gave all she had to live on. In contrast to the way most people handle their money, when we consider giving a a certain percentage of our income a great accomplishment, we resemble those who, who gave out of their wealth. Here Jesus was admiring generous and sacrificial giving. And as believers, we should consider increasing our giving, whether out of money, time, or talents, to a point beyond convenience or calculation. The value of a gift should be be determined not by the amount, but by the spirit in which it is given. A gift given grudgingly, which I've been there, or for recognition, been there too, loses its value in the eyes of God. When you give, take heart. Small gifts are more pleasing to God than large gifts when they are given out out of gratitude. Sacrificial giving results in personal relinquishment. When the woman gave to the treasury, her giving was costly. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. If you do not give at least the tithe, then where is the honor? So I'm getting ready to close. Please stand with me. This message today wasn't wasn't preached to, to gain a collection or to raise a budget. The whole purpose of this is to continue to develop honorable givers. God will bless those who give honorably with the right spirit from the heart. Resolve this day that you're going to follow the example of the poor widow. Go home and read it. Read that story. That's a a, a good one to read and meditate on. Take an interest in the treasury. Develop the right spirit in giving and then sacrifice to the treasury. God desires honorable givers. Amen? I'm going to leave, these, leave you with these words of, of Randy Alcorn. He said, God is the greatest giver in the 
universe. And he won't let you outgive him. 